Hey Nagios community, Benjamin here, and this video is all about giving you some tips to help you master the craft of network monitoring with Nagios XI. I spoke to a sales tech and a support guru on the Nagios team and I asked for their recommendations and I came up with a list of five things that should help you a ton, whether you're a Nagios pro or you're brand new to the community. Are you ready? Let's jump right into it. All right, the first tip from the team is simply this. Get familiar with the Nagios XI interface and some of the different features and sections of that interface. You really don't know what's missing in your life until you look around and see what's possible. And the layout of Nagios XI, the layout of the different components in the monitoring tools inside XI really shows you what's possible. And so definitely check out your core configuration manager. Check out your dashboard capabilities, your reporting capabilities, your problem screen, your quick view, and seriously, configuration wizards. Learn them and use them. That's what's so special about Nagios XI are the built-in configuration wizards. For example, so many users, when they learn about this next wizard I'll tell you about, they wish they had known about it from the start, even people who have been using XI for years. This wizard is called the Bulk Host Cloning and Import Wizard. This wizard allows you to basically point XI towards a host that you're already monitoring. And if you have 10 or 100 or however many IP addresses of similar hosts that you want to clone that monitoring setup for, it allows you to point to that currently configured host and say, monitor these IP addresses just like that. And you hit a button and it imports them all right away, already monitoring for you. It's a nice quick way to ingest new hosts for a project that you just spun up or any other use you can think of. So definitely check out the bulk host cloning and import wizard. Next, you'll also want to check out the JSON and XML wizards. Those are great for monitoring REST and SOAP APIs. Also, there's the SNMP walk wizard. There's so much more there. So definitely check out the wizard menu again and let us know what you're monitoring. Tell us what fun and exciting things you're monitoring. And if you made a plugin or you downloaded one off of the exchange at exchange.nagios.org, let us know. We love hearing about your unique monitoring setups. All right, tip number two, simply this. Host groups, service groups, make use of these. Also, configure your parent-child relationships and your service dependencies, and you should have a much more organized and peaceful monitoring existence. For example, if your parent host goes down, you don't want your notifications blowing up for your child hosts. So configure those parents correctly, learn when those get back online and don't get stressed out about hearing about the child hosts in the meantime. So that should make your life a little bit easier. Make use of the groupings, host groups and service groups. You can quickly see at a glance how those groups are doing as well. Sounds easy enough, right? Let's go on to the next tip. All right, tip number three, and this came from the support guru himself. When you're configuring monitoring of a host or service and you don't quite know what normal looks like, don't worry about setting critical or warning thresholds just yet. Why don't you collect some data first, learn what normal looks like, and then down the road, configure your warning and critical thresholds. All right, tip number four, it's a simple one, virtual machines. If you're working in one, go into your VM manager and take a snapshot of it, back that thing up. And relatedly, go into your Nagios XI instance and set up scheduled backups. That way, Nagios XI will regularly back itself up so you can restore it at the drop of a hat if you ever need to and you can even use that backup to migrate to a new xi instance and move over all of your previously configured settings all right everyone tip number five there is no best way to set up your monitoring configuration what i'll say that again there's no best way to set up nagios xi for monitoring your hosts and services there's too many variables but to make your system as easy to maintain in the future, what's key is this. Pick a methodology and stick with it. Sure, in a big complex environment, optimization is really great, but to make managing any environment easier, having strong conventions and sticking to them over time is really key here. So, for example, there's a lot of different ways you can define relationships in Nagios XI. Host and host groups, parent-child relationships, things of that nature. Uh, and when you have the ability to define the relationship on either end of it, you may find yourself adding hosts and then going into each one and then attaching them to a specific host group. That's great. That could be the best for your system. 
but other people may find it better to go into their host groups after they have added their new hosts and then from the host group side define okay which hosts are going to be added into this group that's okay too but the recommendation is pick a methodology and stick to it and it'll be easier to maintain over time all right community now you're worded up on some of our team's best advice i hope this has been helpful jump into the video section on youtube like this video and send me some comments. Tell me what your favorite advice was in this video. Tell me a tip of your own and subscribe to our YouTube channel for a lot more all about network monitoring and IT management. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Happy monitoring.